Black Voices is brought to you by Squarespace. Everything you need to create an exceptional website. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, visit squarespace.com and use the offer code MACVOICES6. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the Talk in the Mac community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, once more, with feeling, Mr. Joe Kissel. <laughs> Hi, Chuck. Yeah, usually there isn't feeling involved. Today, there will be feeling, for there sure. Will be feel- <laughs> Today, there will be feeling. Um, Joe has authored his next edition of uh, Backup, Take Control of Your Backups, of Easy Backups, excuse me. Well, Take Control no. of Easy Backups, version this 2. Is, this, is, this is Take Control of Backing Up Your Mac. As, as, we were, as Chuck and I were talking about before the show, uh, this, this book has gone through a number of different titles and um, incarnations, and the, the one we're talking about today is Take Control of Backing Up Your Mac. Okay. So... Joe, I, I guess I get a little confused with all the backup books that you're doing yeah. um, as to what differentiates which. Where does this fall? So, so this is this is the truth. In other words, don't don't believe anything else I ever wrote about backups. Just believe this book <laughs> <laughs> until the next um, book. <laughs> well, until the next book. So yeah, so you know, I don't want to get into a whole long boring history lesson, but I, I wrote my first take control book on backups in I think it was like two thousand four or anyway thereabouts. And um, back then we were trying to figure out what to call this book, and I wanted to call it "Take Control of Backing Up Your Mac," but back then a lot of Mac users were still using Mac OS nine. And I wanted to be clear that this is only for Mac OS X users, so we called it Take Control of Mac OS X Backups. And I always felt kind of bad about that because um, as people were looking through our ever-growing catalog of titles, they were looking for something on backups, and they wouldn't look there in, in the list, you know? And so it always felt kind of clunky to me. Um, anyway, it, it went on for several editions with that title, and then we realized... Uh, based on the feedback we were getting from our readers, that it was just getting too, it was well over 200 pages, and it was just getting really, really long and complex, and it was comprehensive, it was talking about everything, and a lot of people were saying, no, no, just, just, just tell us what to do. We don't want to hear all this other stuff. Just, just give us the simple version. So we made a simple version based on Time Machine, um, and that was called Take Control of Easy Backups in Leopard or something, something like that. Um, anyway, when you know Leopard, Leopard was when Time Machine was introduced. So we had this like the the easy light version and then the full comprehensive version. So the easy backups book once once it was no longer Leopard, it was Snow Leopard and then whatever. We um, we renamed that Take Control of Easy Mac Backups. And then more time went on, and we're trying to maintain these two different books, and we're just going, you know, this is, this is stupid after all. I think we just need one book, but that one book needs to be lighter and simpler, and we'll just rearrange it so that the easy stuff is up front, and then if you don't want to read the rest, don't read the rest. So, so a couple of years ago, that's what we did. We, we reintegrated them. We called the new, the new book, Take Control of Backing Up Your Mac, which is what they were supposed to be called in the first place. And um, now this is the second edition of, of that. But if you look back through the whole range of history, it's really like the seventh edition of that book that I started way back when. Anyway, I, to- I did what I, exactly what I said I wasn't going to do, which is rehearse that whole history. Sorry for that. Uh, for those of you who just took a nap, you can wake up now. Nice to have you back. <laughs> well, Joe, I guess, so So let's just get it out of the way. This is the only backups book right now. Everything else goes away. Is that correct? It, it's, it's the only take control book about backups, except for my one on crash plan. Okay. <laughs> so, there, so there is another one, but that one is totally specific. That's if you have decided that you want to use crash plan, that book is just about that. But we can... I mean, crash plan is great, but we can bracket that for for today's talk because that's really kind of a separate thing. Right. So every time we get together and talk about backups, first of all, you know, we have to wake everybody up and say, pay attention. Um, right. Second is that we have to say that backups are changing. Backups are changing yes. in a big, big way. And that's why this book has a second edition or fifth edition or whatever. Whatever it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what's... What's new, I guess, about backups? 
Well, so the you know, I, I as as time goes on, I always keep little lists of things I need to go back and and look at the next time there's an edition of one of my books. Um, so this time was no different, and my list got to be a certain length, and I realized, oh, you know, we haven't updated this book in almost two years, so it's getting kind of long in the tooth, and, and let's look. And I, I was astonished, as I always am, at how much new stuff there is to say, and and not just new stuff, but really how my attitudes have changed. You know, the very first uh, first two or three editions of the book, I was pushing hard on retrospect back then. Retrospect was my favorite all-purpose Mac backup application, and over time, yeah, my feelings about retrospect sort of, you know, went downhill. And then, you know, Time Machine was introduced, and for a while, I really, really liked Time Machine. And now I, I realized, you know, now I, time has gone by, and I don't really like Time Machine that much anymore. It's okay, but um, I'm, I'm discovering, you know, <sighs> Apple, Apple hasn't been very active at updating Time Machine, and in fact, even some capabilities that it used to have, it doesn't have anymore, and I'm feeling that it's getting more clunky and buggy and harder to use, and a lot of other people are, are feeling the same thing, and I'm realizing, yeah, you know, I'm not so crazy about Time Machine anymore. Meanwhile, there are some other folks that are working really, really hard to improve their stuff, and, you know, two years ago, I would have said, well, Dolly Drive, it's an interesting idea, but it's not kind of working for me. But today, I'm feeling like, actually, Dolly Drive is getting really cool now. So what I'm finding is that things sort of fall off my most favored backup app list and things get onto it. So, you know, I, my, I've dialed back my enthusiasm about Time Machine is, is one thing. I have increased my enthusiasm for Dolly Drive. That's another thing. Um, and... Uh, I mean, there have been many other things too, but but getting you know, apart from specific apps, the world is changing. I mean, we are all uh, consuming a lot more data from the internet. We're all generating more data with you know digital photos and video and what have you. Um, and the world of cloud providers is just you know, mushrooming cloud backup services and sync services and storage services and services that combine uh, multiple aspects of these in different ways. And so when I, when I look at the totality of this, I look at, well, number one, what am I doing now that's different from what I was doing before? And number two, what, you know, what might other people need to reevaluate? Because not everybody does things the same way I do them, but um, what's new in terms of storage devices? You know, you've got your your uh, massive bank of Drobos back there, and I think you have a couple of transporters too. And uh, you know, which you know, and of course now the latest news: those two companies are apparently going to merge. So that's kind of interesting. But uh, you know, when, in terms of hardware, in terms of services, in terms of software. Uh, on the one hand, if, you, if you've got a system that's still working for you and you're happy with it and you haven't outgrown it, then, then great, carry on. Uh, but on the other hand, things that might not have made economic sense a couple of years ago, today they might. And there are new possibilities you might want to consider. And things that you might be getting a little bit tired of, maybe you can move on. So th there's, there's a lot of kind of reevaluating going on. So, uh, here we go. Where do you even start, right? <laughs> well, where do you start? I guess I'm thinking about the fact that, you know, we ask, we look to you because you've done the testing. You've done the, you know, the experimentation. So, let's just get it out of the way. Any backup system is good because at least it gives you one. But right. let's skip to the other <clears throat> side and say, what are Joe Kissel's top two or three backup options right now? Right. Um the fundamentals of, of my, my recommendations about backups are unchanged in that I, I think everybody needs three things. Uh, first thing is you need to have a bootable duplicate of your, of your Mac's main startup volume. Uh, you can store this. Most people just store it on an external hard drive. And this is great because even though Lion and Mountain Lion have this recovery volume and you can reboot to do repairs and things, uh, if you're if, in most cases, even if your disk dies, um, 
if if what you're going to do after that is laboriously restore all your stuff for, from a backup, that could take a really, really long time. And I, I never have like just a free day that I can do nothing while my Mac is restoring a backup. I have to get my work done. So having a bootable duplicate that you can say, okay, yeah, I know my disk is dead. I'll, I'll deal with that tomorrow or next week. But right now, I got to get my work done. I have to have all my data, all my apps, everything exactly where it was before. Having a bootable duplicate is really huge. So the second thing is version backups. Uh, version backups let you revisit the way your files used to look yesterday or last week or last month. If you re and, and for me, I use version backups all the time. I'm constantly saying, hey, wait a minute. I, I know there was this paragraph in this file. It's not there now. What happened to it? Did I accidentally delete it? Did I bump the keyboard when I wasn't looking? Did somebody else edit a file because we're sharing it in Dropbox or whatever? I need to go back and see what was there before. So uh, being able to do that is, is really crucial. Of course, Time Machine can do that for you and Crash, Crash Plan can. And lots and lots of other uh, apps can let you see previous versions of files. But that's another crucial capability. And then the third crucial thing is having backups not only next to your computer on a hard drive or drobo or whatever, but also someplace else. Uh, because uh, you know, I've, I've talked to people who have had had a natural disaster happen, or a fire, or you know, hurricane. Something has happened, and everything in their house or their office disappeared. So having a, a backup someplace else uh, is is really really important. It used to be that my advice was, well, you get two or three hard drives and you, you shuttle them around physically to other locations. And you can do that, of course, but nowadays what makes much more sense for most people to get that off-site backup is to use a cloud storage service of some kind. You're backing up to CrashPlan or Backblaze or Dolly Drive or some place in the cloud. Uh, there are many, many, many choices. But uh, the, the point is that if something were to happen to all those physical backups that are right here, you still have this other thing to fall back on. So those are my three basic principles, and those haven't changed. Um, and, and as far as I'm concerned, how, however you achieve those, if it works for you, fantastic. Um, in terms of how, how I do it myself, uh, I have... Well, I have I have all the pro I have all the programs pretty much, but what I usually do for my own bootable duplicates is I use Carbon Copy Cloner and I have it run on a schedule and it just works and it happens. Um, for my version backups, I use Crash Plan and I store a a, a copy of my Crash Plan uh, backups here locally, and then I have another copy in the cloud. Now. I do use a bunch of other apps too. I also have Time Machine running and I also use Chronosync for certain things. I also use Dropbox for certain things. I also use uh, Sync for certain things. And, you know, I, I have I have my, I mean, I, I back up excessively, <laughs> but, I, but I kind of have to because of what I do for a living. But um, I'm, I'm increasingly interested in options that let you use one piece of software for multiple prongs. So, so Crash Plan, for example, is great because you can use it for local version backups as well as cloud backups. The only thing Crash Plan is missing is that Crash Plan does not have any way of giving you a bootable duplicate. Uh, now, Dolly Drive, on the other hand, at least as of the version that they are about to release, uh, gives you all those things. You can make a clone, you can make a local version backup, you can make a cloud backup, and they're even integrating um, syncing and sharing. So you can do stuff comparable to what Dropbox does, as well as all the backup stuff with one app. I think that's really interesting. Now, there, there are some other things about Dolly Drive that uh, you know, there, there are things that Crash Plan does that I wish they do and things that, that uh, Dropbox does that I wish they do. But still, I, I really like the idea that they're going in this direction of just integrating everything together. That's really cool. So uh, there, there are many options and I, and I don't, you know, I know that it's, it's very much a matter of taste and budget and a lot of other things. But those are some of the apps that I am feeling most favorably toward at the moment. <laughs> And now, a word from Squarespace. Everything you need to know to create an exceptional website. Summer's here and you may want to spend some quality time outside. But you also want to build a new website. Maybe it's to show off your fun vacation photos or blog about your garden. 
Who knows, but there are lots of reasons you might want a new website. Why you want it isn't important, you just want it. That's where Squarespace comes in. Fast, easy, and simple, you can build your new Squarespace site while sitting on your deck sipping lemonade. It's just that easy. Pick a theme from among the many that Squarespace gives you, add pages, a photo gallery, a blog, your social media connections, and more, and you're all set. Then, tomorrow, when you're back on the deck sipping that lemonade, you can start customizing your site to look exactly the way you want it to. In no time at all, your site is unique, reflecting your personality and your creativity. The whole thing is seamless, but you have to get started before you can get it done. So go to squarespace.com right now and sign up with the offer code MacVoices6. That will get you 10% off your first purchase and help support Mac Voices. That's squarespace.com and the offer code MacVoices6 and you're on your way to a bright, shiny new website. Thanks to Squarespace for their support of Mac Voices. Joe, you know, uh, I feel like when we get together every two years, you know, we, we tell people something a little bit different. And, you know, that <clears throat> is the gold standard. I mean, because the gold standard changes. But do you think that just as long as you're within those top three, four apps, that you're okay? I mean, do you feel yeah, that's okay? I, you know, I, I have, I don't know how many I would have to go count, but I have a handful of apps that I say, look, you know, you can go read through all of my tables of dozens and dozens and dozens of apps and services. And if you like something you see there, you know, download a demo, try it out if you like it, great. Uh, but from my personal experience and my testing and many, many, many people that I've talked to, uh, both in the industry and just ordinary folk, um, I, I feel like there are a few that really stand out. And if you use one of those standout apps, you're probably going to be in in really good shape. And and I I, I would have a, a you know a higher feeling of confidence with those than with others. Now, one that we've talked about in the past and I haven't mentioned yet today is ProSoft's Data Backup. Now, ProSoft's Data Backup is uh, is it certainly can do both the versioned backups and the bootable duplicates. It doesn't have a, a cloud feature. Um, it's sort of old school, which is to say it, it hasn't kept up with the, uh, many of the, the new things like, um, you know, uh, the, the, the sort of delta encoding, like, you know, block level incremental updates where you're just copying a, a, a portion of a file that has changed and deduplication and a lot of these sort of cool new things. Um, so uh, that's why I've sort of been a little less enthusiastic about it in recent years, but there's nothing wrong with it. It is a perfectly good, competent, solid, reliable program. It's been around for a long time. We're, we have a, a coupon for a discount in the book. Um, so if you're just looking, if you're not looking for flashy or new, just something that gets the job done, um, that's another option. And if you've been using that or, you know, try backup or one of these, you know, any, any of numerous others for, for years and you're happy with it, that's great. I, I, I'm not going to say, but you have to look at it this other way. You have to, no, 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 no. I mean, I, I care about having, having, having good backups. If you have a bootable duplicate, if you have version backups, if you have offsite storage, I don't really care how you, how you get them. Um, I'm only trying to say, are you aware that you might be able to do them faster now than before? You might be able to do them less expensively now than before. And you might be able to get more mileage out of, so, you know, if you're copying stuff to the cloud anyway, and you realize, oh, well, I have backups of all my stuff in the cloud. I sure wish I could also use that stuff that I've already copied up there to sync stuff with other computers or to share some of these files or folders with other people instead of having to duplicate that effort. Well, I, I use Dropbox for syncing, but I use SugarSync for sharing, and that's a tongue twister, and I use Carbon Copy, or I use uh, CrashPlan for backups. Well, sure, you can do that. There's no problem with that, but if you'd like to save on bandwidth and data usage and cost, there are ways of combining all those things into one. So. Um, I just think it's worth you know reevaluating how much data are you producing, what kinds of data are you producing. Has anything changed in the last couple of years since you set up your your backup system? Is anything you know more expensive, cheaper, worse, better? 
and and uh, ask yourself whether it makes sense to make any modifications. Okay. So one of the things that I hear a lot about, and especially given the <clears throat> Oklahoma tornado, is your photos. Yes. Flickr, Google, provide a lot of options right now. The yes. trouble is that they don't stay that way, you know, and this is a problem for people that want to do this. Should we treat our photos as something that is just data and, you know, it goes somewhere else? Or should we have it somewhere that people can access it separate from our existing data? I'm glad you asked. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's almost as though you were reading my book or my mind, or I don't know. So... One of the things, uh, just I'm gonna I'm gonna back into this question. Um, one of the things I've been doing gradually over the years is is taking certain stuff that was in the book and moving it onto a website. And a, a number of years I took, you know, I, I I used to have like a long long list of backup apps in the book, and I realized, well, this this list is constantly changing, and I can't possibly update the book every time there's a change to an app. So I, I decided to stick all that information on a website so that I could update it more quickly and more easily. So I, I did that, and in this edition of the book, I've moved some other chunks of content from the book onto a website simply so that I can keep it updated more, more rapidly and more efficiently, and it, the book isn't going to go out of date in two days. So one of the things I did, uh, one of the things I moved to a website uh, is my list of photo sharing sites. Now, of course, there have been some big changes uh, recently. Obviously, Flickr changed their whole, you know, uh, now, now everybody gets a terabyte for free. The pro subscriptions are going away, except if blah, blah, blah. Um, so there, there are changes in Flickr. Uh, a site that I uh, recommended a couple of years ago, uh, the Kodak Gallery, that no longer exists, and there have been some various other changes. So uh, what I say about photos is basically... If you are the sort of person who, uh, who likes to share pictures with friends and family and you're going to use a service, whether it's Flickr or Dphoto or SmugMug or, you know, the list goes on and on, um, as long as you're going to be uploading some of your photos there anyway, yeah, go ahead and upload all of them. You know, it, it doesn't hurt. I mean, it'll take some time course, but a lot of these sites are either offering unlimited storage or vast storage. I mean, Flickr gives you a terabyte of data for just your photos. I know, I know very few people who have more than a terabyte of photos. So uh, if, if, if the service exists and you're not paying for it, uh, it never hurts to get an extra backup of your photos. And then you get the bonus of as long as they're there, again, they're, they're online anyway, uh, it's that much easier to share them since they're already in the cloud. You just say, well, I want to share these ones and I want to group these ones into a, an album and, and send it to these people. So I, I do think photos are special and I do think that it's well worth um, using one of these services in addition to backups that lets you not only store them online but also share them. Uh, of, of course, it's going to take longer. In some cases, it'll cost a little bit more money. But I, I don't really think there's such a thing as too many backups uh, it, it's, if, if it's valuable, it's, it's worth a little bit extra. Okay. So we have our data, which we create, we have our photos, which we create, but how about those things that we don't create, but that are very near and dear to us? Um, our videos, our movies, <clears throat> excuse me, the things that we would like to use, but you know, and, and if you lose them, well, okay, you know, but it's going to take a lot to get them back. Anything there? Well, uh, I, I will, I'll make a couple of comments. One of the things that's happened in the last two years is that Apple has expanded their list of, of what stuff you can re-download. So it used to be, you know, once, once you purchased a video or whatever from Apple and downloaded it, if you wanted to have that again, you'd have to buy it again. Well, that's no longer the case. You can re-download stuff that you've bought from Apple. And most other, you know, Amazon, most other companies let you re-download stuff. So you can say, hey, I, I watched this TV show. I watched this movie. I don't really want to keep six seasons of Lost on my computer all the time. I need my disk space. So I'll delete them. And if, you know, two years from now I decide I want to rewatch it, then I'll just download it again. So, uh... 
in, in a way, that frees you from having to back up that stuff because you know it's still available to you. It will take a long time to download. And you do run the risk that Apple could decide to delete some movie or TV show from their catalog, at which point, even though you, you bought it in the past, if you don't have a local copy, it will be just gone. But with those warnings, uh, it, it, is, it is a reasonable option for some people for certain kinds of video and TV shows and stuff to say, well, I just don't really need to back that up. Same thing goes for iTunes Match. If you pay Apple 25 bucks a year to subscribe to iTunes Match, then you can store all your music in the cloud and, and know that you can download that music again from any device uh, and not necessarily have to keep your own copy, not necessarily have to have a backup. I still would. I mean, I'd still have a backup of my, of my music. But um, if, you know, if budget is a concern, if storage space is a concern, that, that is an interesting option. Now, these sorts of things aren't, aren't a silver bullet. Uh, they don't globally solve the problem for everyone, but they, they are ways of reducing the pain. Um, but you reminded me of something else, which I, I hadn't really thought much about previously, and now I'm thinking a lot more about, which is content that you create in the cloud. So if you use Google Docs or you use, I mean, there are many, many uh, web apps where you can edit photos and create documents and create other stuff. And it's never stored on your hard disk at all. It's always stored natively in the cloud. Um, I, have, I have read recently of people who, for unknown reasons, have, have had their uh, Google Apps accounts just summarily canceled. Um, or, or there's some, some sort of a glitch and your data disappears temporarily or permanently. So for data that you never store in your hard drive in the first place, um, there's, there's some stuff in the book about, well, would you like to back up from the cloud to your computer or from the cloud to a different cloud service so that if something goes wrong, you have another way of getting at that data. And that's, that's sort of a new thing that people are having to worry about more than previously. That, that isn't really about you know, videos and, and photos and stuff, but um, it's, it's another, another area of concern. Joe, it just seems like, you know, we joke a lot about the cloud and what you talk about here, but it does seem like you got to look at this every couple of years, maybe even a little more often right now as things are cranking up <clears throat> to make sure that you are engaged in saving your data, securing your data, being able to get at your data, as opposed to just saying, well, you know what, if, if my hard drive dies here, then the heck with it. And that really, really annoys me in, in a big way. Yes. But, you know, I don't have much choice. You, th that, that's, that's all exactly correct. We, we all have to take personal responsibility for it. I mean, it, it's, it's true. You, you can't count on all of the different you know, big companies of the world to do the right thing all the time. I would like to believe that Apple will faithfully care for every, every piece of data that I give them and Google will care for all the data that I give them and Amazon and all the rest. But you really just can't count on these things. Uh, big companies, Apple and Google included, from time to time decide, yeah, we're just going to cancel that service or we're going to change this or we're going to, you know, hey, Yahoo, uh, you know, I mean, Yahoo acquired Flickr a long, long time ago, but uh, they've had change in leadership. They're doing new things. You just never know what's going to happen. And, uh, and unfortunately, the more different... Uh, services you rely on, the more different things you have to think about. There, there's, I, can't, I can't say, all you have to do is just sign up for this one thing or run this one app and that guarantees that all your data everywhere is fine. There isn't any such thing. As soon as you sign up for one other service, you got to worry about that now. And, you know, most of the time it's fine. Of course, Google backs up your data. Of course, Amazon does. Of course, all these different companies do. But the fact that, okay, so let's, iCloud is a great example. So let's say you use pages and you store a document in, you know, documents in the cloud in iCloud. Of course, Apple backs up that data behind the scenes somehow, but they back it up in such a way that if, if the drive it happens to be stored on in some data center in North Carolina or wherever 
dies that they can replace that. They don't back it up in, in such a way that you personally can say, oh, this file is wrong. I want to now go back to, I, you know, let me restore that backup from your, like, you, you can't get at it. And, and so uh, you, have to, you have to say, what if Apple lost my data? What if Google or Microsoft or whoever you use lost my data? What if something happened on their end that they weren't planning for? Don't count on their backups. Make sure you have your own. And, of course, every Friday the 13th is International Verify Your Backups Day. So be sure to check. Can I restore a few files? Are they really still there? Was my backup software working? Um, it never hurts to be sure. I, Joe, I want to leave this with um, a, a, a plug for someone that we had on the Mac Jury, and that's CloudPole. The mm -hmm. idea that if I'm putting my stuff up on Google, and that seems to be right now the, let's see, what time is it? Oh, yeah. Um, the, the, the choice right now, um, that I can download it down. Now, the problem is that i got to find somewhere to have it. And that's another matter, but at the end of the day, at least I have the data there. And, you know, maybe once every month or two or three, I can do that and I'm fine. Right. I mentioned, I mentioned Cloud Pool in the book as, as well as Backupify and Cloud HQ. These, these are services that, um, I mean, they're, they're all a little bit different from each other, but they let you take data from places like, uh, like Google and, and suck it down to your local disk, or in some cases to another cloud service, or in some cases both. I mean, some of these services will, will back up from one cloud service to, like, you know, from, from Evernote to Dropbox, or from Google Docs to Dropbox. And once it's in Dropbox, of course, that can sync both locally and in the cloud. So there, there are all kinds of ways of doing it, but uh, which, whichever, whichever path you, you choose, make sure you're doing it some way. Okay, so it's that time of day when we ask you how much is the book, how does it go, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so take control of backing up your Mac. Uh, I don't, as, as of the time we're recording this, um, I don't yet know what the final page count is going to be. Um, it, it is, we're, okay, we've, <laughs> we've done something kind of crazy. We're, we're changing the, the internal styling of our book and of, of all of our books. And one of the things we realize is, you know, the, the, the lines are just seeming a little bit, a little bit cramped. Let's, let's just put slightly more letting, just, 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 just move the lines slightly, you know, two, two points farther apart. And that of course has, has the effect of, of making the books seem artificially longer. Anyway, nobody cares. But anyway, so I, I think it's going to be kind of in the 200 page range, but um, but that's but but actually it I I cut like 20 or 30 pages from the previous edition of stuff that really is is just no longer needed, and I added some stuff, but um, there there's there's a there, there's more meat now. There's there's a lot less just sort of um, stuff that you're going to do. Eh, I don't care about this and flip by. So I, I, all the stuff that I knew everybody was just going to flip by, I said, well, well, we don't need it anymore. Let's take that out. Um, so this book only talks about Lion and Higher. If you really want to know about backing up a Snow Leopard Mac, you know, you can still buy the old copy of the book. But um, concentrating on, on Lion and Later enabled me to, to pull out a lot of stuff that um, is, is like, you know, if you have this version of Mac OS 10, do this. If you have that version, do that. Okay, so I, I have made it shorter and then made it longer again. Um, but uh, we, we decided that it was time for a price increase. The, the book started out as $10, and then when it got much longer, we raised the price to $15. And, and now we've decided that it needs to be a $20 book because it's just that long. But this is take control, and we treat our books like software. So if you had uh, an earlier version, you're going to get a discount. Uh, and if you, ha if you bought the, the book recently, you'll get the upgrade for free. Um, and of course, we always have bundles and ways that you can, you can save money. So I think, honestly, very few people are going to end up paying $20 for it. Most people will get it for anywhere from, from free to $15, depending on what you previously owned or, or how, you, how you buy it in a bundle. Um, but, uh, but the cover price anyway is, is 20 bucks. Still, I think really well worth it considering it's your data. Um, 
and available as as are all of our things at, at TakeControlBooks.com. There are some some discount coupons in the back of it uh, for discounts on certain uh, backup apps and services. So those those can help to reduce the price too. Uh, but if you if you haven't ever read any of my books on backups, or if it's been a couple of years or more than a couple of years since you've seen one, there's a lot of really really new stuff here. I'm I am more comfortable and more proud of this book than I have been of some of the previous editions because I really, I just put my thinking cap on. I said, yeah, do I really believe this anymore? And I, 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 I'm trying to tell you uh, a, more, a more helpful and a more honest version of the story than, than I ever have before. And I, I, feel, I feel really good about it. So I think this is hopefully going to be fairly evergreen. I hope, I hope this version lasts for a while before I have to redo it again. And uh, I, I think it'll be really helpful. I'll see you back here next week. All right. <laughs> you will, probably, but not for this book. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, that's good. Well, Joe, you know, thank you. Because, again, I, I want to stress this, that your data is your data. And if you are not backing it up, then you are at risk. If you want to do the first one or two things, great. If you want to go to Joe's full solution, great. But by all means, get this book. It is really, really important. It's probably the most important book we talk about. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Joe, I will see you again next week or whenever for uh, for the next book. But uh, until then, thanks as always. My pleasure. Folks, this is Mac Voices, the talk of the Mac community. I'm Chuck Joyner. We'll have links in the show notes to the book, to everything that Joe does, and to everything that we do on the Mac Voices group. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, app.net, Google+, Facebook, and for more Apple, Mac, and tech-related shows, including Mac Voices, Mac Notables, the Mac Jury, and the Mac Voices Briefing. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com.